guys, this is Sophia and today we are obviously at a new filming location in my apartment. I thought I would share my plan for case with you all because today we are talking about Girlfriend Collective's bras. Now the reason why I'm even filming this video is because they recently, maybe not that recent, maybe more like a month, dropped a whole new selection of bras on their website that I'm actually really excited about. And I thought I would kind of do a more comprehensive review. Now, I've previously done a brand review of their products and that was super popular because I was I talked about their other products like their shorts and leggings and all that kind of stuff and I talked about the brand in general. So this time I thought I would just focus on bras since they did drop new bra types. Hopefully this video will give you some insight if you're looking at a specific bra, wondering if it's worth it or wondering what the pros and cons are. I'm hoping that this will be able to help you out. But before we get into it, I just wanna say Girlfriend Collective is not sponsoring me for this video. I don't even know if they do that, but if they do, I wish they would sponsor me because I love their product. All of these items were purchased on my own and all of these opinions are my own after having worn them for a few days. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. Okay, let me pull out a bra. If you have watched my Girlfriend Collective brand review video, you know how much I love this. So I feel like I don't have to get into it too much, but if you are new and this is your very first Girlfriend Collective video you're watching, then I'm still gonna get into it just in case. So I really love the high waisted crop feel of the Paloma bra. It's one of the few things that I really love about it. And what I mean, you can tell on the in the photos and everything, but basically it's it goes past down your bust. So it does kind of crop a little lower than most sports bras, which I really appreciate. It is a racer back detail, so it is extremely supportive of your bust and of your shoulders. And obviously the elastic makes it super comfortable, especially knowing that it goes down a little bit as well. And obviously I love this bra so much because of its dual abilities to not just be worn at the gym and while you're working out, but also out and about if you're going out grocery shopping, if you're just going out with friends or whatever, it definitely can function as just a regular top as well. And obviously being able to wear it everywhere, you can tell it's going to be extremely comfortable, at least that's my opinion, for the long term. So I never wear it for a whole day and think, oh my God, my shoulders hurt or anything. So these are great for anyone who has small or mid-sized busts. If you have larger busts, I mean, it's really up to your discretion and what you're planning on buying this bra for. But if you're buying it to work out, one of my notes here also says that's only good for mid intensity workouts. So if you're doing anything super high intensity, like this probably isn't the best sports bra to wear. But if you're doing like an at home workout, if you're jumping around for maybe like 30 seconds, which isn't a very long time, then this is more than sufficient as a sports bra. Now this bra is also $38. It's not crazy expensive, but it's not cheap either. But knowing that it can serve dual purposes for me as an outdoor top and as a workout top, I, I think it's 100% worth it. Okay, let's talk about the Topanga bra. Basically, this is not my favorite bra. I've gotta untangle it. What's going on there? So one of the things I really like about this bra is I love the high neckline. It's not crazy high where it can feel like choking to you almost. It's just high enough where there's no spillage happening, which is great. The other pro about this top is that I like how you can wear it out. So you can wear it out and about if you're going shopping or whatever, it's super comfortable. But what I don't like about it is unfortunately kind of deal breakers for me. So I really don't like this thin strap. One of the reasons why I love the Paloma bra is actually because the straps are thick enough to kind of give you that support on the shoulder and for your bust, whereas this doesn't really do that. So it's so thin that it can get really like tiring after a while, but the straps are adjustable. Hopefully you can see that. And obviously, you know, this is a bra that is very similar to the Paloma bra where it kind of goes down a little bit past your bust. And the last con is I actually think the back is not my favorite. I don't like how thin this is in comparison to the front of the top. Oh, and the Topanga bra is also $38, but I would say between this and the Paloma bra, if you're gonna spend 38, I'd say spend it on the Paloma bra. Now let's talk about the Dylan bra. This is one of the new ones. So the Paloma and the Topanga bra are not new. So this is a Dylan bra. As you can tell, it actually looks more like a top than a bra, which 
is how I intended on wearing it when I first purchased it. So, you know, they call it a bra, but I'm really gonna call this a top because it's great to wear out. This is like the ultimate crop top for anyone who is comfortable enough to wear a crop top because, you know, not only is it racer back, it's also quite high necklined and it does like the pullover bra go a little bit past your bust. This one actually goes past a lot more, so it definitely covers more of your midriff than the Paloma bra would. So if you wear a high-waisted leggings with this, which you will see in the photos, it, it basically covers your entire midsection. There might be a little bit peeking out, but it's really not that much because of how low this can go. Even though I'm looking to wear this as more of an everyday top as opposed to a bra, this would also, I believe, make a great workout bra for someone who might have that bigger bust because this provides, obviously, there's gonna be less spillage, so that means a lot more support when you are outside running or when you're in at home, you know, doing jumping jacks or whatever. I literally have nothing bad to say about this bra the only thing is obviously because a lot of these bras are new there's not a lot of color selection just yet so that's the only negative thing I could say but I'm sure they're coming so the last thing is the price the Dylan is the same price so $38 as the Paloma and Topanga bra which I think is great value for money because very similar to the Paloma you can wear it as both a bra and a top it's still multifunctional so I still think it's worth the 38 so now let's talk about the Lou bra. I've got to turn this inside out. This was the most interesting one for me because I could see that the straps were a little bit different and they are. So because the straps are different from, let's say like the Paloma bra, it does make this bra a little bit interesting. <laughs> so it is a more elastic strap as opposed to the Paloma bra, which is just pure fabric. Like there is a little bit of pull, but it's mostly, it's basically just fabric. So because it is elastic though, it can get heavy on the shoulders. And I think the reason why is because it's an elastic, so it's gonna be like kind of pushing your bust up a little bit, which can be painful on your shoulders. So I did notice when I wore this for an entire day, my shoulders kind of got a, lot of, a little bit sore in the afternoon and the evening. So I don't know how comfortable this would be for an all day wear, but obviously the material and the internal band is still great. So this bra also comes with kind of like a light, a thin cup inside. So I think it's supposed to be more of a bra than like anything, any of the other tops which is nice, but at the same time, it does make the material a little bit thicker, so then in turn, it does make your chest area a little bit heavier for the straps. Now, you know, because of the elastic though, I don't know how great this bra would be for a workout. I could see it being really good for a workout if you are doing anything that requires you to be jumping up and down because the elastic might help that, but it also might harm it. Now for the Lou bra, it is the second most expensive bra out of their entire bra set and it is $42. I originally wondered why it was so expensive but then when I got it the fact that it has an elastic strap as well as like a very thin removable cup I think that can be due to why it's so expensive but because of all the things I don't like about it I don't foresee myself purchasing any more of these. Now the last part I'm going to talk about is a Tommy which I can't show you because I'm wearing it. This is the only one that I didn't get in the cream color. <laughs> so a few things about this bra. This is kind of a very standard sports bra looking top because it doesn't have like such a low drop as the Paloma bra. So the top of the elastic lands right under your breasts, which is fine for me. But obviously if that's not the look you're going for, then you might not like this bra as much. I personally really love the thick straps right here. It definitely makes the distribution of your front weight a lot more even, which is really nice. I can see it being a very good workout bra as well as, like I said, for some of the others, a good everyday bra as well. In terms of working out, I also don't see this work this bra being too great for people with bigger busts or who are doing more high intensity workouts. You know, it does go a little bit higher than maybe the Paloma bra would. So if you're okay with that, then absolutely go for it. But you know, 
it's still I like I can still see it being a good workout bra and like I said I can go outside in this which is totally fine but I think because for me personally this bra kind of stops right under the, the boobs I would probably want to wear something like a cardigan over it or whatever just to be a little bit more comfortable this bra is $38 which isn't crazy expensive it is expensive in the sense that it's the same price as the Paloma and the Dylan bra but you're not getting as much material so I feel like this should have been cheaper because it's like smaller in terms of specs but you know whatever I still think this is probably worth the price I want to talk about one more bra that they did release at the same time that I did not purchase and I will explain why so that bra is the Simone bra now, one of the reasons why I didn't purchase it is because it's actually the most expensive one they have. It was $48, which is ridiculous. And I think the reason why it was the most expensive one is because the Topanga bra had, you know, adjustable straps, but it was still $38. This one has actual, like, bra buckles that you can basically adjust based on your ribcage. I don't know what that's called. And I think because it has all those adjustable features, it did make it more expensive because that is considered hardware, which is completely understandable and completely justified based on the addition. I'm also not a fan of the crossback look. And also in terms of, you know, the front, it looked too similar to the Lou and the Tommy bras in terms of like the actual strap and the neckline and, you know, the length of it when it, you put it on. It was just too similar. The only differences was literally in the back. So all of that were the reasons why I didn't purchase the Simone bra. And I don't plan on actually purchasing that anytime soon. <laughs> Let's talk about, you know, the overall bra situation at Girlfriend Collective. It's quite a bit to go through here, so I'm gonna make it quick and snappy. So aside from the Lou bra, where there was like a removable, really thin, like I'm saying super thin, all of these bras that I mentioned are definitely a thicker material, so you don't really need a bra cup, and you also don't need to wear another bra underneath. Now, if you are uncomfortable with sometimes your nipples showing, then maybe these aren't the best like going out tops that you would want to wear. And if that's the case, but you want to, I would say you should probably size up to make sure you have enough room to wear a bra underneath. But despite the material being thick, all the materials, all the bras are still in that extremely soft girlfriend collective material, which is really, really nice. It feels good on the skin. It doesn't like stick to you in weird ways when it, you get sweaty. Honestly, I have no hate against the material and the fact that it's also recyclable material or it's from recycled bottles is even better. My favorite favorite parts about the bras at Girlfriend Collective and one of the reasons why I really do keep going back to purchasing more when they come out with new ones is because of that band. That band makes it super comfortable because it's elastic it also just kind of like melds with how your body is throughout the day. So I will say though that, you know, if you're in the process of losing weight or you have been losing weight, it can be stretched out and it will stay like that forever basically. And price. Okay, I know I talked about the price of each individual bra. They are absolutely not cheap. I am not going to say that they are compared to other brands. They might be. It is one of those things that it can get expensive the more I purchase, but if you're trying to kind of just dip your toes into the brand, then it's not going to be too bad, especially if you're only buying one or two pieces. But obviously if you're going to buy three or four or five, it's going to add up really quickly. But I will say, if you plan on being loyal to the brand based on this review or based on whatever, um, definitely make an account with them because their loyalty program is actually really, really good. Now let's talk really quickly about sizing. The bras are really true to size. Like I said, when I was a little bit heavier, I purchased size large. They stretched out, I lost weight, and now I'm a size medium. Size medium is now, I would say, mostly comfortable for me. It's a little bit tight when I first put it on, but you know, the more you wear something, the more comfortable and stretched out it gets, which is really nice. And when I say tight, I just mean like, around the waist is where it's a little tight, but you know, top-wise, it's totally fine. I've never had any issues breaking the top part in. But the only thing I would say is if you have a bigger bust size, then I would say just refer to the size guide over there on the website. 
I want to really quickly share with you my fave to least fave of all these bras. This is obviously not including the Simone because I do not own it. But, you know, because I didn't own it, obviously means it's my least favorite, but we're not including that. My favorite is the Paloma. Prize, prize, not really. Then it's the Dylan, so that's the high neck crop top looking one and then it's the Tommy which is the one I'm wearing right now and then it's the Lou the one with the elastic strap and then it's the Topanga. The Topanga I've never liked since the moment I got it and I will always say that in any of my videos I've always mentioned that so that should also not be a surprise. And now for my final recommendation, if you are kind of confused about their bras or you don't know which to choose, for working out, just pure working out, I would say just stick to the Paloma. If you want a shorter bra than the Tommy, so the one I'm wearing right now, for everyday life, I would say the Dylan specifically because I personally prefer the high top and the low waist, but also the Paloma would also work for everyday. So really the Paloma can work for everything. And then the last thing is in terms of like an everyday bra, if you're trying to wear it under a t-shirt or under a dress or whatever, then I would say the Tommy. And the last thing I want to mention is the shipping. Now, when I purchased these bras, it took, I, I want to say like a solid two weeks. One week before they even sent me a shipping notification, another week before it even got through customs, and then a couple more days before it got to me. Their shipping has been more and more delayed as the coronavirus has kept going in the US. And they haven't really made a statement to us via email, but I did check their social media, so their Instagram stories recently, and they did have a slide which I will insert right here where they kind of talk about it. So that is definitely something to keep in mind. If you are trying to get it within a specific day or you're trying to get it as a gift, please keep that in mind. I would say you should give them at least like two to three weeks for it to get to you. Okay, so that's it for this video. I know there was a lot of information thrown at you. I hope this video was helpful though. I'm a huge, huge fan of Girlfriend Collective and like I said, I am not sponsored by them to say any of these things or make this video. So hopefully you found it helpful and if you have any questions about any of the products or the brand itself that I did not mention, let me know in the comments down below or you can always DM me on Instagram. But otherwise, I will see you next Sunday for another video. Bye.